Yeah, so um, when we went to Puerto Rico in February, I met up with Charlotte, who's one of the co owners. Art, art director. Yeah. Art director? Yeah. Uh, Charlotte, who lives out there, and so we, I took the opportunity to go out there and meet with her and talk a little bit about uh, Beyond Walls last year and then um, Beyond Walls 2.0 that is currently here at the moment. Um, and so, you know, I, I talked to her about, you know, it'd be neat if we could have a mural that helps bring together the two powerhouse cultures in the city, the Puerto Rican and the Irish culture um, that share the, the common denominator here, which is the city we love in the city of Hoyok. And so, um, you know, Al, I, there, there's a mural that's going up that's in the middle of being put up that a lot of people don't know where it's going. And I wanted to bring you folks here to kind of share in this experience and understanding what this mural is going to reflect and represent um and also that we you know hear from al and the artist to kind of understand like the strategy behind what it means to develop or draft street art and, and how you incorporate elements to it to help reflect some sort of message or story um so with that being said, a lot of the folks that are in this room here today are leaders in this community. I, I was hoping to have some some more of our friends on yeah, the Yeah, you gotta give me more 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to just kind of together hear about it and kind of just, and that's the thing with art, art's a conversation starter. Yeah. Um, it helps inspire and motivate. Um, uh, and so I just wanted to kind of capture this moment in your reactions as we experience and learn more about what's being crafted um, as we speak. Uh, so with that being said, I don't know if, if you know, yeah. this, this is the art you want to introduce? Yeah, I'll introduce or? Ruben. So, you know, I mean, Beyond Walls, um, I mean, we've either done, we're somewhere between 150 and 200 walls. And I just figured out in the shower before I came here today, we've just started in our 10th city. Chicopee is our tenth city. So 100, 150, 200 pieces of art, um, all with the same sort of rules of engagement, family friendly, not overtly political. Um, and there's a few reasons why we have a really good brand name and a few reasons why we attract the artists that we do. Um, we really take care of the artists really well. Uh, and they have a good experience and they know that they're working in a, we don't work in jet set communities. We work in real communities where real people live. And we sort of, um, we curate to the, to the cultural identities of the cities that we serve. And we're always invited in, right? So Holyoke invited us in last year. Holyoke applied for a year two city and we're really honored to come back to a community that we so care about and so love. Um, and last year, there was a focus on, on showcasing uh, the Puerto Rican heritage and culture that was here. So largely, not exclusively, largely we brought in a Puerto Rican contingent um, and they put up art that reflected their identity right um, this year it was a bit more of a uh, mix you know we brought in some artists from Europe we brought in some artists uh, other Latino artists as well as some Puerto Rican artists um, but we knew of uh, we knew that a piece needed to reflect um, various cultures not, not not exclusively Puerto Rican not exclusively Irish the vast um, melting pot that is really Holyoke um, and current day as well as past day and so um, Ruben was actually the first artist I met with when we were thinking about when a committee was thinking about starting something that became Beyond Walls so we met in Miami um, and we fo I've followed Ruben um, ever since and his pursuits take him internationally but I've seen the type of art that he does and how he brings in the elements of the community and how he sees people that he sees in the community, he involves into the art. Um, and so it was kind of a no brainer, right? We wanted to work with Ruben. We thought Ruben would really uh, see what's special about this community and have that reflected and put it out on, 
That's not to say that we also didn't reach out and have outreach to some really acclaimed international Irish artists, um, one of which is Connor Harrington. And I think in the future we would love to bring in uh, an artist from Dublin. Um, and that very well might happen. Um, and that art would not be reflective of perhaps other elements of the community it would probably be almost exclusively Irish, right? It's what you could possibly expect from that. But with Ruben, um, he features all sorts of uh, elements into his pieces, and his pieces actually have an awful lot of meaning behind it. And so we knew, you know, a little controversy is good. Again, the artwork's always family friendly because we're building behind it a resource for the youth in the community. So we're providing a resource for the public schools of Holyoke and the after school programs of Holyoke. And I look at these hats and we're, we're, you know, we're working with Girls Inc. We're working with the Boys and Girls Club. We're working with a lot of the youth here so that they can understand the meaning behind the art. They can study the art. The art naturally fits into um, the major themes of social studies, history, geography, culture, right? Um, and that's also going to be true of Ruben's piece. So family friendly, not overtly political, but other than that, no more rules of engagement. It's up to the artist to put up their, their piece. That's why we attract our artists. We don't dictate the art to the artist. But with Ruben, we know that he takes these elements and, and puts them into the piece. So, with that, Ruben, thank you. Thank you. Love thank to you. introduce you. So, thank you for having me, guys. Thank you. Mayor, I must say that I did not meet you before, so I was like, so who's the mayor? <laughs> All time, <laughs> finally introduced. So a pleasure. Here I and, am. And, and thank you for having me. But, um, but yeah, this, is a, this was a, a, a very interesting uh, project because um, I feed off of the necessity. Uh, my art cannot happen if you don't give me your issues. Well, the mother of creativity is, is necessity. Uh, if you don't have a problem, your brain doesn't start thinking about a solution. So when you're an artist, you kind of walk on that edge and they call you, oh, you're procrastinating. No, 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 it's that art is so vast and open that the possibilities are endless. But art, that's the best thing about art. But the worst thing about art is that it's so wide and open and the possibilities are endless. <laughs> and so you gotta put parameters, which are usually dictated by production. You can think, oh, I want gold, gilded this, and lasers, but then it's, well, we have $10. Buy me paint. <laughs> so, this, in all of these particularities, but creativity in itself, an idea is, is amazing. An idea makes money appear where there wasn't. An idea is just the most unique thing that you can have. Money everybody has. Put a good idea in everybody. Well, you know, we were looking through the books, and guess what happened? So, um, but I came here because I'm, um, yeah, I was told about all of these uh, 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 difficulties that we were having to, for, to, to have an artist kind of illustrate everything because every single artist that is here is being called because of what they do. And those who don't know what they do will soon realize that this is a global, world-class artist, book collected, galleries are gonna come down here just to take a picture of that. There are people that travel just to see the new murals that these people erect in the world. In order for you to see this artist, you have to travel to at least 15 countries and just travel around. So, but I particularly got known for this, doing these gorillas because when I was painting, um, um, when, uh, when I started doing my, my gallery artwork and tried to present it and was asking questions around, I was told that it was too harsh and too, too wild and too... So no one here knows which art we're talking about. Oh, okay. Have you guys seen the... The health center? Yes. The big green gorilla? Sure have. Okay. So, um, when I started doing these gorillas, just to give you a preface about it, uh, before I get into this particular one, um, it was because I was selling my work, I, I mean, I was trying to show my work after the real estate collapse. I was laid off, I was a creative director, great uh, corner office, higher firepower, everything. Right? And whoop! That disappeared. So after a year, I had no savings, and I just started creating art. And uh, when I went to present it, they told me it was too wild, too crazy. To the, and I just heard all of the description. I was like, "This is like the big gorilla in the room for you guys, because you guys don't know how to sell it or how to approach it. You're telling me that it's too street and too wild. And when I'm in Wynwood and everybody's coming from all over the world to see the murals that are being erected out here, not your gallery. They're eating your cheese, drinking your wine, and leaving. So." 
I kind of left a little mad and disappointed, but somebody gave me $300 for supplies and told me I give you this wall. It was 100 and something feet, 120 feet. Part was facing the, parallel to the street and the other part went into this long wall in front of a U-turn that had grass field so you could see the front and then the side. So I made this gorilla holding a brush in the gallery space, which is the front end, but the other side was a hundred foot of the gorilla kind of laying down and I didn't have anything else to do, so I started freestyling everybody that helped me, their family members, their faces. I was drinking black coffee, Cuban coffee, Cuban coffee's on the wall, and in that way I started just on the spot doing the things that surrounded the community. There was a dog that was protecting me at night, I painted him, and it, that mural ran for eight years. And, and the community owned it. <coughs> and I realized right away that that was heavy. That was my first mural. Next week, I was bought at muralist in Miami by people over the phone. So I called them and I was like, look, there's so many great, I was scared because there's so many great artists, street artists and all of these things. They're like, well, you, you were, this was done by cell phone. People voted anonymously, blah, blah, blah. I was like, well, I'm not even from Miami. They're like, hold on a sec. Talk to somebody, they're like, do you paint in Miami? Like, yeah. <laughs> then you're it. Click. And they hung up. And after that, I started just getting jobs based on that mural. And they're like, so what else do you have? And I'm like, I don't have anything else. This was my first mural. I just got laid off. So sketch it. And they're like, and I paint right there. And they're like, okay. And everything just kind of rolled. And 11 years later, I haven't seen the inside of a studio. It's just been, it's been great, great. But when I got here, I knew that I needed a conversation to start. So the gorilla is the perfect element because it's just a sketch. People imagine it brown, black, with this, with that, it's a knocker, what is this? It had no pupils. So it looked very angry and very mad. It had all of these particularities that people don't know what to expect, but that's what I wanted. And I have a lot of stuff that I'm gonna be releasing because anybody that was saying something bad about it, I would come down, I'm like, please, please tell me more. And they, because they eat their words. And they say they started saying all of oh is this ogre and who's this Shrek and who's and I'm listening to the, the Puerto Rican community go off and I'm like yes yes give me more give me more and I'm gonna keep on doing that because the minds are changing and because this gorilla represents the art movement that is taking over the world this is the post graphism movement is uh is wild is out there is it has all of these qualities like the gorilla but the gorillas are more humans than humans and more family oriented and friendly, vegetarian, like all of the biggest and strongest animals in the world. They're um, state, this is a, a lot of things that I like about it. And, but I realized that it just shouldn't be an illustration. It has to be a playful thing so people fall in love with it and trying to make people, I want more than 90% of the community to love this mural and that's a hard task. To have 50% is a hard task. But I have noticed that when I draw the things from the community and I draw from the community and they identify it, it becomes theirs. Oh, that's my house. Oh, that's my thing. Oh, that's, a, oh, that's my mural. Trust me. So uh, the gorilla, I made a large size because the wall is large. It's beautiful to, to put all of the, the things that are Holyoke. And in the forehead, I already put a Native American. Uh, in the, in the, and you can pass this around. And then in between the eyebrows, there's May flowers, which are covering the Native what, Americans' the mouth. 1850, when it was the, the city declared and turned into the new name. So I, all of the particularities that are there, I work concept before execution. Everything is conceptual and it has many layers. I have to try to make the story magical. That is the job of the artist to make the mystery and enhance the mystery. So the right arm is gonna be the whole Puerto Rican experience from, from the birds, the coqui, the national flower, the, the ajibaro in the field, doing the earth and seeing the little house with the donkey, with the hills, with the palm trees, with the sun, um, and the actual Puerto Rican things that are here. The flag, all of it is gonna be reflected. The music for playing, other women with the classic dresses, everything so the Puerto Ricans are gonna love this on the right arm is gonna be all of the Irish experience and it's gonna have from a candle with the little ring that has the 
two hearts held by the hand, it's on the thing in the candle lit up, a little girl praying and maybe doing the first communion. All of this. Shamrock. Yeah, oh no, it's gonna have shamrocks, it's gonna have the National clover, Irish Birch, it's gonna clover. have daisies. Uh, is it the shamrock or the clover? Okay, listen, that's a mistake. <laughs> that is a thing. <laughs> I know it's a thing. So you wanna know this. Yes, sir. Okay, <laughs> there is a guy on our parade committee who will get up if he sees four leaves on that thing and say, we are not clover people, we are shamrock people. Right. And he'll reject it out of so hand. Sure so count your leaves. leaves. No, don't worry. I, I, already, I, I already have it um, in a way that, uh, that if you see the leaves and you take it off, they turn into a heart. So there's going to be a lot of them coming down in daisies. And the national bird from Ireland, which has these beautiful green tones and everything. So. From the chest of the gorilla, you're gonna see daisies, shamrocks, the national bird, in Irish stuff all the way down. On the right arm, you're gonna see Puerto Rican stuff, like I explained before, and the music both. On the chest, you're gonna see a caduce, which is the, the Hermes staff with the two wings and the two snakes. So it's gonna represent the healthcare center itself. Uh, from the from that, there's gonna be birds of paradise, the orange flowers that comes out like that also coming through it. There's gonna be, uh, there's gonna be everything that I've researched that I still have to figure out on the spot because, like I said, creativity is the necessity is the mother of creativity, and it's why it allows me to position them as I'm position that positioning them so you can end up with a composition that has everything from afar. You're gonna see a big gorilla, a green big gorilla. White green is the color of the hospital along with the blue. So it's already branded in a way that is invisible, which is how branding works best when you don't know it's, it's brand. And, uh, uh, but also, those two colors are the best colors for, for soothing anything. If you put a blind man in a blue room, <coughs> his heart rate goes down. That's why the music is called the blues. That's why bars have these colors. That's why it's, it's, this is, uh, these are, vibrations that emanate you. If you put a blind man that has never seen color in a red room, his heart rate goes up. So that's why the red light is the casinos, the kind of thing, this is not, this is in your DNA. Tigers are black and yellow, so are wasps, so are bees, so are butterflies that don't wanna be eaten by other things. So are the frogs that are the most poisonous in the planet. So is the warning sign, and it's in yellow lights would run in you and then red your heart. All of this is carefully studied from the beginning of time. So when you've got in front of this wall, green is the soothing colors. Hospitals all over the world have it. So do jail cells, so do schools, in a different different forms of mode because it's nature. So marrying these two colors in this way allows for, as shocking as it was in a black and white sketch, the second I put blue, hmm, the second you put green, okay, well that's a good shot. And then little by little, this starts. The more flowers that appear on this mural, the more people are gonna like it. Kids are already, once I put the butterfly and the eyes are cross-eyed and it has glasses, it becomes another thing. It's not the <laughs> nasty gorilla that you respected. There is an elf on the shoulder, which is actually um, uh, a character that I've been doing for a long time, which represents me, and he has this particular mask, which is, uh, the, the Puerto Ricans know it as a lechon, and it's a, uh, it comes once a year for the Dominicans and it's just to celebrate, in a form of celebration to celebrate carnival. If you're familiar with the Brazilian carnival or the Puerto Rican's carnival, it's kind of like the same thing. We're Dominicans, we need very little excuse to make loud noises and play music, so that's what they do that day. So when you see these particularities, when you see this, uh, it's, it's true, it's true. Everybody says, like, why are they arguing? Oh no, they're talking about family. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So, it's the same kind of thing. So, uh, but that is going to be the most colorful character on the shoulder, which competes in ratio in size from the uh, with all of the colors in difference with the green green gorilla. So, but on since gorillas have hands on their legs, I want to put that flag held by the staff like that. So it's gonna be on the right side, the American flag. Um, and on the leg, since I freestyle all of these elements, I wanna put three children holding arms, elbow to elbow protecting the flag, because I heard a story about a mural that was known about the American flag and the Puerto Rican flag that the mayor himself 
as a child went and defended when they wanted to cover. So everything that I put is because I got it from the community. Nothing that's there when I came in and they're like, oh, we have a lot of problems. I'm like, well, give it to me because that's how I'm gonna fill in that huge wall. Mm -hmm. If you don't tell me everything, then I gotta come up with stuff. I gotta come up with what I think I should be and what I think this is and what I think of you is what I see. And if I see a lot of problems, then problems is what you're gonna see. Am I gonna make them poetic? 1,000%, I'm not gonna put problems on the wall. My job is, like I said, is enhance the mystery and make you fall in love with this and ask questions. So uh, I think this, this is by now, you guys have two of the biggest murals that street artists have done ever. Me and Bordello, which both of us do a collection of many things that make one strong. So I say you have a strong foundation you can build up, no matter what. And we have a strong foundation. We, we know that we're not going to offend anybody. I definitely want to start a conversation. I wanted people back because there hasn't been a time that I haven't done it that by the end they're like, this is the most beautiful thing. <laughs> and so it's really a, 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 a way of looking at it. And, and, and art captures when it's different. If you see a very realistic face, as realistic as it is, you've already seen it. If you're going down the highway and you see pole, 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 and there's one pink pole with a plastic cap, you're like, ooh, what was that? And you're gonna have to, there was some, because it captures your eye. So the sheer size of this is gonna capture your eye. The unusualness is gonna capture your eye. And I'm hoping that it truly turns out wondrous, magical, beautiful, the point of view that I'm using for everything that you see on the wall, since none of us can go above to see the mural, is from below. So everything, if you notice this, look at the can, you're see, of the spray paint, you're seeing it from below eye, eye view. So as you take pictures with the camera, everything that comes that you're looking above, you're seeing it from below. As it comes down, the, 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 the view is gone, it changes, it changes, it changes until it's below eye view, and you're seeing it from above it. So when you use the camera, rather than seeing this kind of um, weird shaped things, you're going to see um, like it's from below, because you can't fly. So there's no way to change any other direction for this. So uh, already, just by the butterfly and the changes that were there, the people that were the whole time, all of the nurses are like, ah! Oh! <laughs> oh, and right away, and I tell you this, what's going to happen is that you're going to hear horns. Horns like never before, because those who have not seen it or the new additions are going to stop. And then the person behind, da, 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 and then they get there. <laughs> and then the person behind does the same thing and does the same thing and does the same thing. And also, it's such a big wall, has so many gallons of paint. It takes so long just to do. You see it from afar, you're like, well, it's so and so, but you're already a hundred feet away from the spot that you're looking at. So as that lift is lifting, Oh my God, wow, and just, then it starts growing. It's four billboards wide, and then how many high, I, I don't know, I don't have a calculator, but, but uh, the first part is the most slow, slow and boring part, which is the production, is put paint on the wall, feel it. Now it is slow and the rain makes it drip if, if you don't calculate correctly and all of these particular logistics. But now it's in the front part of the mural. That happens immediately. Uh, in Wynwood, people come and bring, uh, Wynwood is where I'm from, and, and in Miami is uh, the place that has the most murals um, uh, per square inch in the world and all of these things. But uh, people come with picnic tables and picnic lunches and things because they know that in the six, that six hours, this trans turns into this thing. And I work at night. So they love to come and do moonlight picnics in which there's no heat, there's no rain, beautiful weather. I love working at night because the people are nicer. They're not 
rushing, especially in that parking lot, having to do things and the heat <laughs> and I gotta get to work. And, ah! So, uh, but at night they're walking with people and they start, it's a, it's a completely different conversation. And I got to meet a lot of the characters at night too. So <laughs> the characters around here, which I mean, again, I'm a people's person, so I believe in good uh, energy and positive energy attracts positive energy, bad energy, negative energy cannot stand positive energy. So they're either going to leave or they're going to get affected by it and try to join the positive energy. So uh, all of these positive vibrations, and that's what it transfers in the mural also. I, I paint love. I believe in two powers, love and fear. They rule the world. And they have ruled the world since the first man went over the first hill and looked ahead and saw another one. And it's like, oh my God, what is this? So I try to communicate that in every mural that I do. And I challenge you to go out and look at the murals that are out there. Because every art that you see is ruled by those two love, two, two powers. You're going to say, is this love or fear? Or the balance of both, which is real life, which is what I try to do with mine. But overall, I want love to emanate from this image. If you see this big gorilla and you don't get love, then I did something wrong. Then, then the other particularities are personal to the person that is looking at it, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I leave it enough that is that is there visually. I am I am an illustrator and a figurative artist at, uh, at heart, so if I draw that hat, it's gonna look like that hat. So, but at the same time, I do enough to leave a poetic message so you can take your own interpretation from that Irish thing that you're seeing that is Irish, from that Puerto Rican thing that you're seeing that is Irish, Puerto Rican. On the belly, I wanna try to put the hands of a Puerto Rican man in a put in a Irish man shaking and Actually, how would you know she's got an idea for you on that okay yes but before before we jump in though I the, what I love about this you, you you said the phrase you said gorilla in the room yeah and Hoyoke in Massachusetts or probably just Western Mass we've always been the gorilla in the room okay. and when people talk about our city just like when people share their personal thoughts and ideas about gorillas, mm -hmm. there's this stigma and negative perception of our right. city, just like there's stigma and negative perceptions of gorillas. And I think when you describe what gorillas actually are, yeah. is a lot yeah. of, so this, at least by interpretation, this gorilla represents Hoyoke, and it's looking at City Hall. Yeah. Um, the chin itself is gonna be a volleyball that is gonna say, Holyoke. Yeah. And at the end, it's going to be trademark because it's the first trademark. Record. So many things that you're going to see, you're, you're not going to be able to see that mural and see it all in one city. It's going to be impossible, even if you saw the process. It's later that you're going to be like, oh my God, look at that. Oh, wow, there's that, there's that, there's that. So not, all, so not only are gorillas beautiful creatures of nature, yeah. they're strong. They're strong. They're very they're resilient creatures. Hoyoke's always punched above its weight. Uh, That's awesome. Uh, being a city of only 40,000, we've competed strongly with metropolitan cities when it comes to industry, uh, uh, culture, and our contributions to uh, actually the world, I would say. Yeah. Um, and, and Mike can share many stories on that. There, there is a, a, a Irish and Puerto Rican connection the story that I told many times at many of the Irish festivities of how we're much more connected than what people think. And so there's this gentleman, Don Pedro Albizo Campos, mm -hmm. and then you have James Conley. Uh, Albizo helped draft the Irish um, uh, uh, Declaration of Independence. Right. Uh, and also was a key leader on the island of Puerto Rico when many folks were fleeing Ireland because of the potato famine. Um, they were being turned away from American ports. Folks like Albizo encouraged the island to say, hey, these people need our help. And so there, to this day, there's Irish influence on the island of Puerto Rico. That's awesome. And then now here we are in the city of Hoyoke where, you know, we kind of, um, uh, settled here and, and have been building um, relationships for, for decades and so this when we look at this gorilla and, and our perceptions about gorillas 
they're actually beautiful creatures, just like the city of Holyoke's a very beautiful city. I agree. And, and the people here, you know, we, we, we work together to protect this city. So. I love the East Coast. Um, they uh, all know. Sure. I love, I graduated from Salem High School. And, um, got you. And it's brothers I, in arms. When you're talking about arms and the guerrillas and kind of like, you know, displaying everything on both of the arms, this is what um, Don Pedro Albizu Campos and John Connolly, they were brothers in arms. So, it kind of like... I'm recording. If so you, if you Google it, it, there's a lot of good stories about the Irish-Puerto Rican connection and these two guys, how they work together to... Um, I know. will put it. I mean, it, it's it, the real, again, the, the idea is, but how do you do it poetic, poetically so somebody right. says, wow. So I have this idea so far, because less is more when you try to incorporate more people. I don't know the sure way to success, but the sure way to failure is trying to please everybody. Mm -hmm. So if there's two hands, it's in green colors, so there's not going to be race. There's just going to be two hands. One may be darker green than the other, so your perception of what's light skin versus what's tan skin. But one is going to have, as I got in Thailand, with bamboo. One is going to have tattoos of Taino culture. The other one is going to have Celtic tattoos. Now, what can I do with those? Because again, I try to up the ante and up the ante, creative. And maybe there's a story that I can tell there as far as what you just told me. His face tattooed on the arm that is shaking. I don't know. But I also love the fact that it has a lot of blue collar uh, 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 people here. And uh, my art, I try to make it, for lack of a better word, as pedestrian as possible so you can understand it. There's no concept here of the blue square or, or it's very, that hat looks like that hat. Oh, that, that's Pedro, I know Pedro, it looks like Pedro. That's this, so, so that's why I think that it grabs from the five-year-old to the elderly in such a way. Kind of like the same way Golden, my, one of my partner's friends, and, our brother in arms when it comes to this, um, draws very childlike. And it's the same reaction as from a five-year-old to a grandpa, they're standing looking at this, wow, and the color. So uh, getting that out of people uh, uh, works better when you hit at their heart strings and just kind of remind them a little bit of that person and then they tell the story. They make the movie in their head. And there's just so many things here that I think that are gonna just the more I add, the more ideas I get, and the more. So it's like almost a fight with time. When we were saying, okay, at the beginning I started by saying the great thing about art is that the, the possibilities are endless. The bad thing is that the possibilities are endless. But once we said blue, green, gorilla, and these problems, now we know our parameters, but you get creative you can jump out of that box with green, blue, and the problems. Like Deuce as a gorilla. So again, this, this, this approach uh, with the more you feed me, the better it's going to be. Because in the end, impossible as big as the wall is that I can put all of the things. Right. At some point, well, last <laughs> throw, nothing fits here. Let's hope so, that this is becomes that. So, so did you want some thoughts and ideas or? No, I mean, if you, I'm going to be painting. I have tons of stuff, but if you do feel like, hey, Ruben, I thought about this. And you know that restaurant La Isla? That's our place. Whatever. Because I also, I'm going to put my own uh, opinion of what I see, which is what is happening. And uh, the first thing I put was the Native American with the Mayflowers, in the, which is the, the Massachusetts flower, but it's covering the Native American's mouth. And on purpose, because that's our reality. But that's the most beautiful poetic way that I found to not hide the realities and still put it out. And as a matter of fact, I just met Olivia out here, which told me, you the one doing this? I have pictures of Native Americans from him. Da, da, da. I want to send it to you. I want to call Beyond Wesley. And I told him, just tell him the gorilla guy. 
No. So expect that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so again, the the more I put, the more I know that people are gonna walk up to me with images, with things, with this, with that. It happens all of the time, and this is my biggest mural, and I'm trying to encompass as much as possible in it. And uh, I think we are truly gonna have a hit. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'm already feeling it. So, so what did we learn about our curation today? Learn a valuable lesson. You wanna, you wanna feature. You know, design and Mayor Garcia calling it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> you want to feature Irish symbolism, you want to feature Puerto Rican history, you bring in a Dominican artist. That's what they've done. I got it. I got it. But we've, brought, we've got the right party for this. We've got the right guy for it. And, um, and we've been watching the community feedback and documenting it in that parking lot you know so there's there's positive affirmation being yelled at the wall there's thinking behind what should be on the wall is being shared and and there's a lot of interaction back and forth from Ruben so once you have something good. on the wall everybody has an opinion what I should have been there but it's like hey and I told me on the first meeting I told him look you guys are gonna have to double down because once I put this thing out there, people are going to be like, what the hell is this? Are you calling us monkeys? Trust me, I've heard it all. So I just smile and nod and laugh at given time. But I never had a mural in which the space between the sketch and started to freestyle the actual was so long. Yeah. So I applaud you guys for double down and not because every morning I see the nurses. <laughs> it's like oh, I don't know. <laughs> what about the kids? <laughs> the kids are gonna love this. My kid hates it. Slats, <laughs> slats. Please don't hang me. I even have to tell one of the nurses. Well, I promise you that if you don't like it, I'll paint it white. I'll paint it white with a brush, with a little brush. The whole thing. She's like, are you sure? It's like, all right, hot stuff. And she's like, there. <laughs> so I think I think we're gonna be okay. So does anybody have some thoughts? Want to share reflection? You know, as long as I'm here, I'm, I'm very glad to be here. So uh, Josh invited me to be here by way of reaching out to a mutual acquaintance on the parade committee. Fairly short notice, and I am nobody to be sitting here speaking for that committee That's or all the Irish folks who live here now or the 180 years that we've been around. No, I'm going to say you said it. Yeah. Why is that right. he said it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> but, yeah, but, you know, if you want to blame Moriarty. Uh, I think I heard you mention the hands and the heart. I think, are we talking about this? So this is called a clatter. And, you know, there is a whole symbolic vocabulary that's millennia old uh, from Ireland. And it would be fascinating to see your it would be fascinating okay, for you to give me yeah. more information about it because that's the thing about it. When I come into a town, I love food. If I wasn't doing this, I would be a chef. Food to me is the highest form of art. It's the one that you don't cook it for one generation, you lose it. You cannot put it in a museum. Even if the chef who invented it gives you the recipe, it won't taste like what the chef is doing. So it's a series of things. So in every town that I come to, I visit I follow a, a, a rule of, if there's a line, stop. Doesn't matter if it's dessert, if it's juice, if it's a stop. There's a line, it's either gonna be good, or inexpensive, or good and inexpensive. Those are the three only results that you're gonna get. So, from here to China, that's all I've done. It's so, like, so, so I'm sharing this with the yeah. parade committee. It's gonna get circulated to all 200 of us. And okay. you, may, you may get inundated, and that'd be great. Yeah, that, um, okay. And then more, yeah. look at the size of that gorilla, yeah. I'm just gonna have to pick yeah. what you know, and hear what echoes between all of the, them and be like, okay, so this is simple. Okay, so this is something. But what happens is that when you come into these things, people, and I'm gonna make a comparison to the, what you're saying about the Irish community and what's happening, but I say, hey man, do you guys have a, like a good restaurant here? Like, here? No, we don't have, it's like nothing like Miami. It's like, I didn't say anything like Miami. I said, just a good restaurant, good food. It's like, yeah, well, man, I really, unless you like, like good breakfast, it's like, who doesn't like a good breakfast? And within breakfast, five more restaurants are already, oh, then you gotta visit so-and-so, and you gotta go by, the, they have the best crap, and all of a sudden, all of these things happen. So the same thing happens with what is unique about this town that people from the town forget, because you've been living in the forest for so long that you can see the beauty of each tree. 
That's right. When I arrive here, I'm already in love with the city. As a matter of fact, after this, I would really like to talk to you about doing stuff here because I am, I've been looking for a town in which I can start a can control school. People are mesmerized about how I do this. And uh, there is, there's not yet in the world. They don't know how to quantumize and who's the best and what is this because much like what tattooing used to be, graffiti is taught from vandal to vandal. And all of the artists that are there learn by themselves. There was no art school that put them to do what it, I went to art school and I still didn't learn this. I had to go to the streets with all of my knowledge and grab a can and I start going at it. But I know that I can set something and there are people that are inviting me to New York for to New Orleans to do this and this cool aspect and brick and mortar and everything. But but my I love the Northeast Coast. I came in through New York, that's where I saw graffiti. Lived in Salem, Massachusetts and graduated. I saw the worst of America during the eighties in New York and the best of America in Salem. From Puritan town tulips, pies on the windows, lobster, the most beautiful summers I think are in, in the Northeast Coast, in Massachusetts specifically. And um, in the historic, in the historic aspect, the Puritan aspect, the I love Americana, you know, it's like collect uh, anything American. And when I come into these towns, I'm like, my God, this is gorgeous. And the thing that I was not finding in all of the towns that I was invited to was the Latino community. That's the aspect that I was. In New Orleans, tons of culture, great food, awesome. I play blues, I love it. <laughs> but man, find another Dominican. And it's like, eventually you say, I just want you can. Is there anywhere where I can get you can? No, but we have this bowl here. What's, what's, it's like, yeah, I just want you can next, man. <laughs> with, with, with red onions and an avocado. Where can I get that? Yeah. And, it's, and it's crazy, so. But, but culture changes everything. It does change everything, and I believe that art, just like Bob Marley, art and love, it's a bridge that, 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 that everybody, food and art and music, they all got to have a painting without it, it's just pain. So, but, uh, but I look at this place and the landscape and all of that, uh, and so, so I'm very interested to, to, ask, to, to answer that question. But, but yeah, no, I think this, this, um, this is, um, a way to get everybody in the community to find something that they agree that that is holy. And at the end, I think that this mural is gonna be the holy of Gorilla. I'm looking for a name because uh, uh, I think it's gonna be very representative of, of what it is that's happening in a tongue-in-cheek way. All of my artist friends are amazing at what they do. And once you hear the concept, at the beginning you say, what does this have to do? You hear the concerts are like, oh my God, okay, I got it. The dog, you know what the meaning of the dog that they're doing in, you know? You don't know it? Okay, then I don't want to speak ahead of the artist that is doing But it's amazing. Once you, what? It's so beautiful, so dark. And because it's dark, it's so beautiful. It's just, you guys are gonna flip out. So there's so much there. But thank you for having me. I hope you guys liked it. Really Did anybody cool. else want to add anything else? Any fears that I can pacify? Do you have more you wanted to share? So I'm going to throw this one other piece out. It's not all history. There is a current day connection to Ireland and the city of Hoyoke. Our president, our governor have been over there in this last couple of months. The vice president of Ireland, he's called the Tanishta, marched with Josh and myself in our Hoyoke parade just in March. Uh, so that's a very live current connection. The ambassador to Ireland is from Brockton. So we have, this, we have this really strong connection that currently exists. The best thing I think I can do is invite you for an Irish country breakfast at Mrs. Mitchell's Ooh, with the first. Sir, with, 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 with you my, heard what I like. <laughs> with, 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 with a couple who moved here from Ireland. So um, 100%. It's, it's not just 180 years of history. It's 2023. When can we yeah. do this? Because I, 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 well, yeah. is that tonight yeah. I, the mural is so big that I have my lift right under the belly. So I'm working the head. Today I'm going to work the rest of the jaw bones. I'm going to put two white sharks here, a volleyball, stuff that has to do with Holyoke and the water and the area in Massachusetts, etc. Uh, but then I go to the chest with the caduce, the snakes, the things. 
So I'm not, I don't have to move this apartment. It's a moving building, right? So once I'm done with that, I gotta position myself correctly and it's either gonna be the Irish arm or the Puerto Rican arm. So I believe by our conversation that I understand the Puerto Rican plot better, so I'm gonna start with the, but that gives me time to have breakfast, to analyze this aspect, to get references, because uh, uh, yeah, I, much like I was saying that you forget about the particularities, after this meeting, I want you guys to really go and say, what would, is the thing that I like most about holding? Because it's later that, after you're massaging an idea that real original, oh, there's this signs that we only have here that we put on the street because of whatever, whatever. And until you see it is when you remember. In Dominican Republic, we have all of this culture, like the Safufu. And you ask, what is Safufu? Oh, the kids play with these beer caps and they flatten it. And they take two beer caps and they put two little holes and put strings and they go like this. And they're like racers, so they fight each other and you gotta cut somebody else's string. Only a Dominican kid that is truly Dominican will know that guy. But that's the same thing for the Irish. I know you have Donny Brooks or whatever. <laughs> exactly. Oh, it's not to that. <laughs> no, of course not. A Donny Brooks is a fight with everybody, fights everybody. But, but what I'm saying is that they have these particular cultural things that are for the, for the Irish and, 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 and that I want to know. Otherwise, I'm just from the outside kind of putting uh, the fighting Irish. Shamrocks. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, and it's like, ah, oh, this guy doesn't know. He's just giving me the commercial thing of it. Exactly. And I don't want that. I want to be in there. And, and, and I believe uh, uh, I have developed a way of listening in between the lines as you're telling me stories. So, so then I can ask, well, wait, what, what do you mean that? What is that? Where, oh, oh, that's how we do the pork. No way. Tell me more about that. Because it's finding the origin the real center of the thing that, that is really gonna, gonna get the best story out because that Irish person that sees that thing that they don't rem that only see in Ireland, that's that pole that you do right there. It's just like that. Bah! All of a sudden, it's, that's what's really gonna make this story. Yes. How much, how much have you had a chance to talk like you in our community? I would. If you think I'm talking now, I talk a lot. So I go, I, 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 everywhere I go and while I'm there, there's constant communication with everyone there. As a matter of fact, I would love to play you some of the things that I recorded. There was this lady that, that was screaming, what is this crap? And I went down and I'm like, please tell me more. So I'm constantly trying to get information from the community. No, that, I know you share that, that's why I was interested about that. Um, how you said, you know, talking to people, it's how you get your ideas, but I'm wondering, youth in particular, and the reason I'm saying this, I don't know if you know guys that, uh, the Cubas, uh, mural that you see on Cubas, this was in the 90s, I have the article, it was a grant that I got, and got the youth involved, this is what, during the time where teen pregnancy and infant mortality, uh, the, you know, uh, disparities was happening in the city of, of Holyoke, we, only, we didn't have prenatal care in the city, people had to travel, those who were high risk to Springfield, so we began to educate our community about the disparities of, of, of what was happening, and it was through a youth uh, program that I built on, called the Peer Educators for a New Generation. And they came up with that idea about that mural. If you see what's happening was the lack of uh, children being vaccinated back in the time and immunization coalition got uh, uh, created because of that. A, a, a teen pregnancy uh, effort began because of that. Um, many of the uh, healthcare facilities that then opened came about, Healthy Start came about because of that, meaning providing health insurance to individuals who did not have prenatal care due to health insurance. So this, this conversation, which I love what he's doing because that was a creation of a conversation and of course, you know, the idea of the mirror, if you look at it, you have to kind of say, why is that there? Why? What is it? You don't but ask you, why, then it's... <laughs> you look at it, and if you knew the story, then you understand it, because it's going to happen. Like you said, not everybody's going to be happy for what you put up there. You need to know history in order to make... You cannot like, make a good judgment call unless you know what was happening there. Right, because like, I remember going into galleries, and I look at galleries, I said, what is this all about the art? I cannot I, interpret it, and somebody interprets it differently. 
So that interpretation is going to come. So well, I we have an idea because the nature of it, and God for our curator and for all understanding the needs of the project and calling me, is that um, since I am li visually literal with the stuff that I draw, um, we're gonna have, we're gonna try to put something somewhat of a legend in which you can, with your phone or something, see, oh, what's this, what's this, what's that, what's that, uh, have video of me explaining what this is. That would because, be nice, yeah. Yeah, because the, the, the thing about it is that, for example, we were speaking about a nurse that passed away and everybody feels really strongly about it in the healthcare center. And I said, yeah, but painting a face of the nurse doesn't mean anything for the rest of the community. Painting these things, being that literal, I have to be poetic. So if I find one of all those old nurses hats that somehow fits itself into the equation, yeah. it's in the health center. Already you have so many disparate things. So, so it's just yet another element that you say, hey, why is that? Oh, and you click, it has nurse on, so who was nice. he, was he, da, da, da. So that's what you take advantage of. My art is hook, line, and sinker. You ask questions, drag you do a, 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 a QR, what is it, QR? <laughs> yeah, that's what we're thinking. So, 1972, sorry. 1972, what was this? What was this? What was this? It was like a march. It was a march to City Hall, where we can reference the march to City Hall. Is, is that going up to White Street? No, I'm going down White Street. That's picture. White Street. Oh, yes, it related to fires that oh, were taking fire, place at the time. Right. And yeah, I, I did the reason, so I, I want to manifest that, but when it comes to the things, I'm trying to put as many positive, as, as positive as I can put it uh, 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 in addressing this subject matter. Yeah, because the thing is, is when, so the Josh Garcia campaign, when we ran for mayor, we, I try to figure out the best way that I can, because I'm, I'm the first Puerto Rican mayor in the city of Hoyle, so that, that has some significance of importance in a lot of ways. So I, I try to figure out, you know, how do we not repeat mistakes from the past, from previous leaderships, and how we bridge these cultures together. And so, and then, you know, we, we ran a, a Hoyo campaign no matter where you lived in the city, whether you lived in West Holyoke or South Holyoke, we identify as Holyokers, and that united everybody no matter who you were, what neighborhood you lived in. Mm -hmm. um, that happens to be Puerto Rican, and I'm pretty proud of it, just as much as you should be pretty proud of it. I'm very proud of where your roots are, and we come together as, as Holyokers. And so, when we thought, when I was talking to Charlotte and, and Al too about this mural, I, I wanted to have something that did that. Because you know, we heard in the first round, and then we put all these Puerto Rican murals, and everybody, a lot of people love it, obviously you heard. I didn't want folks from other parts of our community to feel excluded. So I'm like, man, how do we get a mural up? And I love the idea of a third round where we did bring in a, someone from Ireland to, yeah. to do some. Yeah. Uh, but how do we get a mural that's a Hoyoke mural? That, embraces the cultures of these powerhouses, but identify as Hoyokers, as, as you know, the my city goal that is we all that. share and love. My I goal is like for that because... The concern of the community is that, like, there's, Even the, there's Puerto Rican things, there's a lot of Puerto Rican things, and there's a lot of different art that's going up that's all awesome. I love art. Well, I'm putting, and I totally get the concept, but there is there is a Hoyok culture meeting. That we're all after school sports. Our right, we have our own Hoyo culture. Like, like we have our own Hoyo culture that historically speaks to itself. I'm Puerto Rican, but I was born in Puerto Rico. I grew up in Hoyo. Mm -hmm. So that's a different concept. And why like, would you say that is? Uh, for me, uh, it would be playing in the parks and the flats, or swim, swimming in the Connecticut River. Then uh, you and I have the, to have a conversation. The dance, <laughs> the because the, the, swimming in the canals when you weren't allowed to. Right, there's, there's, a, there's, a variety of there's a variety of different things, but that would just be me, right? Bumper there, rides. There's a bumper riding. But there you go. This is what I was talking about, about the discoveries of the things right. that are so local that you forget about it. That that's what's gonna make somebody say, "Oh, look at the bumper." That's like I what appreciate I do. all the art that's out there. I, I think it's all beautiful, but I, I I I do hear the sentiment of some of the residents that feel like there's something missing, and that 
to me is that little holy culture because Puerto Ricans are represented and the Irish, that's awesome what you're going to do with all the Irish stuff too. I like that. And the, if we're going to incorporate Portuguese, you were here too. Whoever, this is, this is what's going to happen. I have, so what I have represented the, the Polish community and the black community also because the gorilla is going to, is going to be right. holding with its hand. One hand is going to be the knuckles on the ground. The other hand is going to be like this, holding flowers, which are calla lilies, which are originally from Africa and represent the black American uh, individual here in Holyoke. They're also green, white, and yellow, so it marries the, the whole conversation there. And inside of it is going to have white poppies from Poland. So it's going to also represent the Polish element in, in within the community. Now, this bouquet of flowers is going to be taller than this wall. So people can stand in front of it, and all you see is flowers behind as a background. So uh, this is extremely large scale. Uh, uh, but the reality is that those are the particularities that I'm looking for because in the legs is gonna be the legs are gonna be about the holy yoke itself, the experience, meaning like the mayor protecting the flag. Now I see the flag there. I wanna put that flag, and and that's the flag that unites everybody. I wasn't gonna put an American flag, but then I say, you know what? This is what this is. This gorilla is not gonna feel like the Puerto Rican gorilla, nor the Irish gorilla, nor the healthcare gorilla, nor it's just gonna be, that's why it's gonna say Holyoke on the chin. The Holyoke. Holyoke. Trust me, it's gonna be the Holyoke gorilla. I'm looking even for a conceptual name because the meaning of the butterfly and the gorilla is gonna become very intricate because as much stuff What's as- the butterfly again? You know? There's a butterfly on the nose. Yeah, you know? yeah. What is it? Exactly. Well, it's a monarch butterfly. It's beautiful. It's small. It's light, and it's a contrast in comparison to these huge, huge gorillas. After all, the only thing that tamed down that gorilla for the people <laughs> was the glasses and the butterfly. I could have left it full green and not done any of the things that we have talked about and left it like this. Yeah. And now kids are like, look, man, it's just, it's a different thing. But it has to be the holy of gorilla. It has to be America as a flag that is fully represented, which is a blanket for all of us. So in the end, I feel that that is the trajectory, no matter what, that this is going to take. In the end, you're not going to see a Puerto Rican gorilla or an Irish gorilla or a Polish gorilla. You're going to see a gorilla made out of so many elements and bright little graffiti effects and things that there is. Is that that? Oh my God, is that that? Is that? It becomes a finding. What? And you will never find it all in one city. It just, it, it, and haven't met somebody that could do that, including the people that were involved in the project because it's just too much to look at. Yeah, but it's um, My children play Parks and Recs here after school. Families, parents, Irish, Puerto Rican, yeah. We love and we engage and we come together and these sporting these softball games Love basketball it. games football games the thing about it is that i'm sorry to interrupt you is that how do you represent that like i can put a picnic with a baseball and a bat inside of it or put people playing in the park so yeah, it's yeah. how do you put it yeah. there in that thing that that when you're looking in the legend oh you see it so it's a play in all of that. Knowing what it is, awesome. Now I got a device. What is the best venue to show all that you have said that we meet at the park? That we, that's a beautiful one. Okay. Not just the Holyoke Knights because we have Dean. But I mean, just yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. But but yeah. again, that's a mural of its own. So. Is it interesting that she was thinking about that because yeah, what my my children are grown, of course, adults now, but. I, we talk, I, I used to tell them about Mountain Park, who Mountain never, Park. Yeah, Park. You Mountain, Mountain Park, Park emerged, it, you know how you said the melting pot, there was no, re, all kinds of race in there, mm -hmm. there was never, no, nothing against each other, nothing, that we loved each other, we see, just I'm went there to enjoy, we used to that. dance polka, you remember dancing <laughs> the polka in the, in the middle, I mean, I learned how to so do that, so there you go, like, just, like, just because of the, mer you know, the melting kind of, it was an interesting, it was an amusement park here in the city of Holyoke, very well known, and it's no longer here, but here it, 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 I'm just saying that that, that kind of got me to that point. That's what I want you to do, because <clears throat> again, now you, are, uh, now you guys are thinking. Well, at the beginning, I was asking, is there a place to eat? And everybody was saying, no. 
Now you're like remembering yeah. restaurants. So that's what I want you to do because the park, the mountain park, you in particular, I'm sorry, what was your name again? Uh, Israel. Israel. So Israel in his Holyoke local knowledge, but it's hard for an artist that is not, it's not from Holyoke. Right, right, right. And if you don't have a local artist, again, that has lived these things that can represent you on the wall, because you may have local artists, but he may not want to represent that or do because he's an artist. He does what he wants. Not, and, and, and that's that, exactly so. <laughs> that's why I understand art. So like when people are, are complaining and saying things, I understand art. I get it. I I went on a trip to Europe just to visit all these places to see all these little museums and all the other stuff. And, and I got it. I get the understanding and get it. You pay for what you get. You get an artist, and you're gonna get what they put up. You can try to give them the information, and they're gonna try to put it in the they can. Whoop. Yeah, but it's just gonna be what they. W what comes out. They're going to regurgitate what comes out. And you have to kind of accept that. I think the, 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 the piece that you're saying would add so much value of like doing like a little key with a map because that would help out tremendously Understand. with yes. people understanding the purpose and the reasoning behind it and how everything is incorporated into yeah. it. And it will also help us with tourism. <laughs> That's my, I, I want whomever see. I'm, I'm debating if I I'll put see you guys. How about this one? Okay. Nice part. I think the best piece is is that Pokemon, right? The the game when you play on your phone, they usually do the little battle stations on every art piece. So Holyoke is gonna have a sh fucking battle yeah. station. <laughs> So you're gonna get people to yeah. come here just to yep. Pokemon too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I also have to scoot. Sorry. We're gonna make good on that breakfast myself Thank right now. So Great to meet you. Pleasure. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Uh, yeah, oh, you're invited I also wanna share you that um, my son, he uh, at one point he didn't know that was art, but he was he used to uh, he had a group called Paper City's Finest. Okay. And he uh, did a, a song and a video down in South Florida walking, explaining here we are, but we have a value. And, and in a sense of, of them trying to get a message out, but uniting the, the youth, because it was somewhat violence at the time. And I'm talking about 10, 15 years, maybe That's the video. Good. It's 413, it's called the 413 Paper City's Finest, okay. if you look it up, and he has a video on YouTube. But in his message, he's talking about, and most of the stuff you're covering in the merging pieces, and I love it. Thank good. you so much. Good. No, thank you. Thank I you have to go me. back. I got thank you guys. Thank you so much, guys. Yes, we received a small amount of pushback from people who identify as Christians or evangelical Christians. Sure. I think particularly uh, with the mural on Hampshire Street where there's a, a Tayano a culture is represented. Yeah. And they say, well, that's pre-Christian, it's un-Christian. And we received a message as recently as today. Is this black magic? Is it uh, uh, Santeria? And, um, We'd like to respond to everybody, no matter yeah. what, the, what the complaint might be. Any suggestions? Well, I would say that something that has helped me when it comes to the world of art is that I put historic things. That's history. It has nothing to do with religion, with political. It's what happened. This is factual. I work with the Day of the Dead in Delray Beach in a place where they were not allowing any kind of art. And the community rose up and it was like, well, but this is factual. Frida Kahlo, this, that. And so I never try to approach with the art the religious or the political because you become a symbol for whomever wants to use it and all of these particularities. And it's a tricky place because it's about how I feel, so emotion. So, But uh, if it's uh, factual, hence, would they say the same about if the two hands are shaking and I do one with Celtic art and the other one with Taino art, would you complain about the Celtic also? Is this, you know, is this is all factual for them and cultural and it exists and it's provable and I'm going for reference for this, for that. So concept before execution, at least for myself, is how I rule myself so I don't jump into those kind of issues. But when those issues come, uh, what he's doing there, can you can really boil down and investigate and see what it is and what it represents. May, you may believe whatever you want to believe, but this is what this represents in the world. We got into the conversation of ism at the, at the Airbnb and what does ism mean, elismo, that is add to something there, uh, in the movements. 
And I call my art post-graphism, because I'm not a graffiti writer. I don't vandalize. But I use this 21st century tool that doesn't even touch the walls to create things that dry immediately. And if I don't want, I erase immediately. So it's almost the closest thing to Photoshop in real life. So when we started talking about the ism, there was this guy that started complaining and saying, no, ism is being used by graffiti, by this, by that, and I'm just looking at it. And then I went like, yeah, but you're a graffiti writer. And that's all you see the world as. And I was trying to step out and telling you that ism is the word that you use for movements. The communism or um, pointillism or impressionism or any kind of ism that you put at the end. And that's part of the colloquial language and the etymology of words. It has nothing to do with whatever you feel it means. So in that particular, that's how we'll, how can you tell that to somebody that feels strong about something? That's like telling somebody, your baby's ugly, but I love it. <laughs> so, so I don't know, do it carefully. Oh, thank <laughs> that's you. all right. Do you have anything to add on, on that particular? Because there has been folks in the community that have felt that you know, there is some uh, religious element, a practice of Santeria that connects with devil. Um, uh, you know, anything to add? Well, no, I, I mean, I think, I think for much of the community that saw Rymex putting up his piece, they were extremely supportive and, um, and there every day. I mean, Maribel and George were there at, every single day, right, watching that. So for many in the community, this was an extremely special piece that they felt like they participated in. We have never put up a piece, and I don't think we ever will put up a piece, where you have 100% of the community loving the piece. Um, art is subjective. The desire here in Holyoke is to have enough pieces of art, so if this one isn't your bag, you see one in the in the background and you walk on. And what we've seen with the power of art is often folks walk on, they meet another group, they seem to have very different backgrounds, perhaps even socioeconomic backgrounds, the conversation starts, and then they move on and they take a piece of art in together, right? And obviously there is a desire here, there's an economic development piece, right? You walk on, maybe you grab a cup of coffee together. Maybe you stay for later, you grab lunch. Maybe you stay for a show. So the desire here is to, been, to bring in the world's best street artists that reflect the cultural identities that are here today, um, that have been here, um, and have them uh, put up the best pieces to ideally attract folks to come to not just South Olio, but up on High Street. So, um, you know, if we can increase the business for these mom and pop eateries. The re you got the real McCoy here. I mean, we have like food from, what, four continents within yeah. 100 yards of where we're sitting. Um, and it's the real deal, and it's, it's a family business. And if we can increase the number of transactions they're doing an hour, increase the average transaction, that's second job opportunities for folks that are here. So the creative economy is really real. But again, we've never put in a piece that's gonna have 100% of the people loving it and that's just whatever that is that isn't art you know um because art is subjective so um yeah but i I'm, I'm i'm touched that it meant so much to folks that i care about like maribel and george who were there every day and and um and continued to clamor and say we really want you know the community was the community called for uh, David Zayas and, and Don Rymix to come back and, um, and so we brought them back and that's their first time they've ever collaborated on a piece. So another uh, first Holyoke. down here in Holyoke. Yeah. So another yeah. first. So this no, no, we are a city of first. Um, that's good. That's good. <laughs> guys, you guys do any religious at all? Any religious uh, walk? From all the walk you guys done? Have we done religious pieces? Yeah, like a religious piece or you don't do a religious piece? Um, I don't think so. I don't think so, no. I think that artists, for the most part, don't. Because then you are a religious artist. You, they don't call you an artist, they, you're a really, And you can make, you can become the Vatican's number one guy in that, but not many artists want to do that. If I want to make money right now, I do five 
talk portraits. And I make a lot of money, my friend. Because there's people out there, right. and if I put him as Superman, even more people. If I want to make money, trust me. <laughs> and they, there will be somebody with a machine gun that they will fly down to my house and say, I want that, brother. And that's a, that's a trend now. No, that was a that wasn't so much a trend. It was just that that was advertising. Yeah, there was no print shops, so you will pay. You say I want that. No, I want Jesus White. I will pay you. He's Jews. Start spreading churches. That's what that was. It was called the Renaissance. And it was paid by, by the, the Vatican. And it's the Renaissance where the beauty of art to cover, whatever, that was all paid. That was all paid and chained and, and whatever. And in every country, a new Virgin Mary appears magically. But that is history. Uh, that is 100% history. Like you said like the, the Santeria is history. Religion is also history. I don't know if it's Santeria or not. I just know that. Oh, Santeria is history. I'm, I'm oh, talking about Puerto Rican, you're Dominican. No, 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 no. I, I don't I mean, I mean, mean Dan I don't know if he oh, did yeah, exactly. No. But Santeria is history. Yes, and it religious is. Religious is history, too. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, just but, like you say, the Vatican, Pela, but it's still history. A hundred percent. But and, then, and there's then, people, that's what happened in here. I'll just speak of yeah. That's what a lot of, that's what he, he asked that question. Because there's a lot of people that feel that there's no joy about religion. And there's people that also believe in God. There's people that are also religious. I mean, not everybody, some believe in Santeria, some don't believe in God, but there's also a community that believe in God. I think that, uh, for example, in my, in my mural, and I believe, and I now want to speak for any single one of the artists, so I'm not going to say I think, I'm going to say I believe. I believe that all of the artists that are here are in some way or shape or form religious. Some of them may be extremely religious, but I assure you that they don't paint religious images because we need problems. New problem, yeah. yeah. That's what People I'm, are I'm, very, very look at what's happening. Yeah, 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 just yeah, with yeah. that, that wasn't yeah. religious. So usually, if you want a religious artist, you get a religious muralist that is happy to do so, much like I'm happy to do my monkey. There's a guy that that's all he does. Yeah. And gladly, and he's inspired by God. So I think that's how you solve your problem. I mean, not your problem. Maybe we got to do all religious muralists mm -hmm. so that everybody don't, don't feel left out. Let me get but uh, I, I will, in my humble opinion, I would say, and not only God, maybe different religions. Of course, but they, they, now we now we jump into that. So again, in my humble opinion, <laughs> now how many religions? Yeah. Now should it be the black Jesus or the white Jesus? Both of them. Now more. So both of them shaking hands. I, 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 I will tell you this. Uh, I don't right. know the way to the sure way to be successful, but the sure way to failure is pleasing everyone. Yeah. So art, very open, poetic. I speak about love and fear. Is God in there? Do yes. you see God in my love. Okay, so there you go. And fear too. And I don't want to do this because it's not, I'm not trying to please everybody because I, I get it. I, I get You're a man, you're sir. trying to encourage. <laughs> no, I don't. I, the last thing I try to do is try to please everybody. That's a path to failure. That's the rule of your game, right? It's um, like, yeah. However, what I'm trying to encourage <laughs> is a, a hoy of peace. Amen that we all identify with. Even though we're, we're, we all celebrate our individual cultures, we got our holidays, we, Hoyo's very diverse. Uh, at the same time, we, we come together and, and celebrate the things that make us Hoyo. And that's where the, the unity is, and I think that that's where we can definitely make unity. a lot of people happy. Well, Mayor, I'll tell you this. Uh, my goal, I don't know about what the other murals are doing, but that's, purely my goal of I that love it. and make a print maybe even limited edition special things because I believe that people that's one of the places that has the most people coming in and out because of the parking of the nature of the business and everything people can't help but to go what is this constantly and I think in that that's where we you know I'm thinking where you put the whole yoke put an R in here Oh yeah, no, I just said it. Then people were real, Holyoke, I love it. Oh, Holyoke, what is that? Holyoke? Holyoke. Oh, Holyoke. Holyoke. Yeah, you 
put an R at the end of it. These are the type of things that... the name of the gorilla. The gorilla. The Holyoke. That's the Holyoke gorilla. The Holyoke gorilla. Take a picture. Take a picture of this mother This moment was the creative moment I was waiting for, sir. Yes. Do it again. I bet I can take a picture. And I want to go to this breakfast, so. Oh, please, please, please. I gotta I, call Mike and let me know. I, 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 yeah, no, I mean, this is, it's truly two days after this conversation that people said, you know what, Ruben? You know what I was thinking? And real input, like, I would love to, I don't know the park, I don't know the things, but I'm sure that you know it. And let's say that you go to those, one of those parks and you start walking around with your phone, you're gonna see a water fountain. Something that everybody knows. That's it. That's from that. That's what I mean. How do you incorporate all of those emotions of your childhood, of what you did with your your first kids, sort of this thing? That's what we did with the exactly. My campaign logo put the merry-go-round, city hall, and the wheel that's in Heritage Park. It's like, is it, is it maybe, for an example, and what is, it, what is the sign the of the park? Is it the sign of the park? Any particular thing? Like, does it have a, anything you know? Because it's those things, like if I put one of the signs that said, Handball with an arrow that was from the so I don't know those things and I don't know if it exists but that's what I'm getting at is like going to this place going to mountain whatever that you guys mountain. mentioned mountain what was this what mountain does it have a, a, a known sign that tells you this way to mount or yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what I mean so I don't have to do the mountain it's put that so everybody sees all yeah. the movies made in your head. The, the sign on Northampton, Mount Tom, just draw that sign and everyone's like, oh, that goes it, That's what I'm talking about. So when you tell me of these things, okay, great. When, when what's yeah. the name? The guy well, with the motorcycles. That's yes. what we have actually yeah. in the city council chamber is just the murals on the wall is... is Iconic um, things. Yeah, just sort of history, you know, locations, sites. Yeah. Mountain really Park like was ours. We couldn't have, not every family could afford Riverside. You remember Riverside, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is now Six Flags? But well, we mountain. had Mountain we Park. We had a pool. We had yeah. little cars. <laughs> to go down. See, I hear you guys. I hear you guys talking like that, and that's that's exactly the kind of because I'm scratching the surface otherwise, and I can fill in with graffiti effects and things, but rather fill it with the sign and then put little graffiti. It's just more condensed with information, and information that is truly refreshing for he who sees it and reminded it's like eating a meal that brings you back to your grandma like oh yeah. my god I, it's the same thing but visually that one yeah your explanation was wonderful thank you so much thank you so much thank you thank you sir those glasses those glasses thank you sir